just because my attic's full of caps. Just because the basement's full of tires. Just because I ground the numbers off her engine block. She thinks I steal cars. I Christian Car Guy Radio Show. I say this calls for action and now. Nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud. Just because she found the bathtub full of auto parts, she thinks I steal cars. She thinks I steal cars. <laughs> Right? I mean, that's an interesting phrase right there. She thinks I steal cars. Why, she's so prideful, right? She thinks she's better than that poor guy that, you know, she thinks he steals cars. Well, today's show, The Heinous Sin of Pride. What's an antidote, right? (laughs) So, if you're like me, you may struggle with that time after time when I personally look into that struggle <clears throat> the, the struggle I have with relationship after relationship often at the heart of each of those is that heinous sin it's pride right I feel like when I'm praying I'm you know God is like back again Robbie are we here again <laughs> so if you think about this from a car guy standpoint <clears throat> pride leads to road rage it leads to struggles in the service department where that guy is trying to fix your car it leads to struggles with car salesmen, struggles almost anywhere you look. So a solution to pride, wouldn't that be huge? We would love to hear your antidote. Call us today, 866-348-7884. If you got an antidote for pride, I know one person, namely me, <laughs> that could certainly use that, but I was wondering how God is come after that in your life. I would love to hear that story. 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. What a challenge, right? In Philippians 2-3, it says, let nothing be done out of strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. For me, that's really tough to do, really tough to do So I decided to look into my struggle with sort of the religious spirit is what I've heard it called, and the yeast of the Pharisees. You might remember in Luke 18, 11, that Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like all these other people, robbers and evildoers, adulterers, people who don't change their oil, people that don't... pull off on the side of the road when the check engine or the when the uh, low oil or the uh, low oil pressure light comes on even like this tax collector right so this all took me to mark 8:14 where the where the disciples had forgotten to bring the bread right and you might remember in that passage Jesus says and he says be careful he warned them watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. So I thought, well, I, I'll start studying yeast, which before I get into this study, again, if you have an antidote for pride, real quick, you call us, 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. We would love to hear your antidote. So I decided to study yeast, and a study of yeast reveals some awesome stuff. And I read a whole lot on that, and this is sort of the Reader's Digest version of what I learned this week, which many of you may know, that yeast is a fungus that eats sugar and it emits, kind of eats sugar and it emits ethanol or alcohol. And those tiny bubbles of alcohol make wine and beer, and also bread rises as a result of those tiny bubbles. You may even know that the ethanol that you're burning in your car every day now that, you know, you've got E10, gasoline, that... That comes from yeast. Did you know that there's tons of yeast 
that they're using to make ethanol. And the Jews have long taught that yeast puffs up as pride. So every year at Passover, they spend a week getting rid of all what they call the hametz or the leaven or the yeast in their houses. They literally spend a week right before Passover, and that's the original idea behind spring cleaning. Well, look at the Pharisee that we were just talking about that was all puffed up, that it was all, you know, like, I'm not one of these poor schmucks that doesn't change their oil. I'm not one of these people who doesn't rotate their tires or check their tire pressure. <laughs> like the lady who thinks the man steals cars, right? They're all puffed up. But as I studied the effects of alcohol, I believe there's more to it. And there's so much more about fermentation. You know, the Bible's just loaded with stuff about fermentation. You know, alcohol so is quickly absorbed into the bloodstream. It comes through our intestines almost immediately and has a free pass to the brain through what they call the blood-brain brain barrier. It releases dopamine in our brains very quickly. Now, listen to what psychology today has to say about dopamine. Dopamine <laughs> is a neurotransmitter that helps control the brain's reward and pleasure centers. Dopamine also helps regulate movement and emotional responses and enables us to not only see rewards, but to take action to move forward to them. So dopamine, you know, those Rocky fans out there, that's eye on the prize, right? Eye of the tiger. That's the guy who's got his focus on what it is that he's going after. So with that idea of dopamine, right? Think about that drunk flirting with all the women. I think he thinks he can fight everybody in the bar. Well, the yeast of the Pharisee has similar properties when you think about it. That Pharisee has his eye on a prize too, but that prize in the case of the Pharisee is his own kingdom, not God's, right? They're drunk. They have their eye on the wrong prize. They're, they have this puffed up a view of their own ability like the guy who's ready to fight anybody, and they're drunk with power, weren't they? Well, of course. And the yeast of Herod, very similar, right? Herod had his eye on a prize. He was drunk with civil power and puffed up with his eye on his own kingdom, not God's. I mean, you don't have to look at many politicians <laughs> to see that particular kind of drunk with power. So my real concern is me, of course. Man, oh, man, I'm puffed up with concern about my own kingdom. You know, what I'm going after. And I... I'm praying like the publican, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Well, still thirsty for answers to pride, which I very much am still right this minute, I proceeded with the story in Mark, and I found some huge misunderstandings I had, which we're going to get to in a second. But before I say that, I want to remind you that your stories are what make the show. We would love for you to call in. What's your antidote for pride personally? Maybe you have some scripture or something that you hold on to, 866 866- Three four eight seven eight eight four. We would love to hear your story. Of course, we're going to get to the Jesus labor of love in a few minutes. And by the way, if you're going, Robbie, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see this all written out. It's at ChristianCarGuy.com, right? An antidote to pride. It's, it's right there. The article, I posted it today. So ChristianCarGuy.com, it's all right there. So <clears throat> getting back to Mark 8, right? That Jesus said, beware of the Pharisees, you know, the, the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. But then the disciples, they discussed with one another, said, it's because we don't have any bread. Now, you may might this moment be puffed up with pride and say, see those disciples, they just don't get it. <laughs> well, be careful. <laughs> Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And do you remember? I mean, don't you remember? Now listen closely. Don't you remember when I broke five loaves for the 5,000? How many baskets and pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they replied. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basket full of pieces did you pick up? They said seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? Well, think about that a minute. Do you really understand that? Well, I clearly read that, and I was like, no, I don't understand why 5,000 or 12 baskets were left over or why 4,000 and seven baskets left over. I, I never really considered all the significance of those numbers or what does that mean exactly? 
See, if you'll allow me to go on and share some of that study. See, once I agreed that I really didn't understand, and I really didn't understand, and by the way, I've studied it a whole bunch, and I still don't think I fully understand and by any means, but I have some insights that I want to share. I believe if we go back into the scriptures, we can unlock some of the mystery. See, the Torah or the Old Testament started with the Pentateuch, right? Five books. And it fed, by the way, 12 tribes. Wow, five books, 12 dry tribes. He fed 5,000, 12 basketfuls left over. We're going to go to a break. We're going to find out more about the 4,000, more about the seven. But most importantly, what is your antidote for pride? That's where we're all headed. 866-348-7884. 866-34-TRUTH. Call us. My intestinal wall absorbs that ethanol And soon it passes through my blood-brain barrier There's a girl in the next seat who I didn't think that sweet But after a few drinks I want to marry her I guess it's not surprising my dopamine is rising And my glutamate receptors are all shot Well I'd surely be moaning all that extra serotonin But my judgment is impaired and my confidence is not no <laughs> the heinous sin of pride. Of course, pretty easy to see in somebody who's drunk, but are you drunk on your own pride? That's kind of the question. And we would love, I personally would absolutely love to hear your antidote for that type of pride. Your eye on your own kingdom, your eye on some prize that you think uh, is more important than God's kingdom. 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. As we were talking about Jesus describing the feeding of the 4,000 and the 5,000 and going back to what he had said, do you understand? He was asking the disciples after he told them about the yeast of the Pharisees and after the, the yeast of Herod, he said, now, do you understand? I fed 5,000 and how many baskets were left over? And they said 12. And he said, and I fed 4,000. And how many baskets were left over? Was seven. And he asked him again, do you understand? Well, I had to admit <laughs> I didn't understand. So I had to put my mind to it. I said, well, let me see if I can understand. And what I've, what I've found is really remarkable in my own life, in my own prayer life now, um, that I understand a little bit more about what was going on there. See, as we talked about right before the break, there are five books in the Pentateuch, which most people called it, you know, back in the old days. It was the, the Old Testament, the Torah, and it fed 12 tribes, which was how many basketfuls were left over. Well, then, right, Jesus fed the 4,000. But what you want to perhaps pay attention to is that it was only a few days between when he fed the 5,000 and then he fed the 4,000. If you look in Matthew, Mark, they give you the account. But in Matthew 15, right after he feeds the 5,000 and right before he feeds the 4,000 is this little story where this Canaanite woman came to Jesus and asked her to, to, say, to heal his daughter, her daughter. And in Matthew 15, 26, it says, it's not good for the children's bread to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And the woman replied, yes, it is. Even the dogs eat crumbs that fall from the master's table. So Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith and that your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that very moment. Well, isn't it interesting that right after he fed the Jews, the five with the Torah and the 12 baskets left over, meaning the showbread, there were 12 loaves of showbread, there are 12 tribes of Israel, I think it's pretty clear that that was a view of the Old Testament. But now here comes Jesus to share with the 4,000, right after the story about the Canaanite woman, who, by the way, was a Gentile, right? So now he feeds, right afterwards, he feeds the 4,000. Now, how many books start out the New Testament? Well, there's four is the Gospels, right? There's four Gospels, and there are seven loaves of seven basketfuls left over, which you know, seven in the Bible is always a number of completeness, but it's really interesting to me that Jesus' last word from the cross 
the seventh word from the cross was it is finished. And so it's like Jesus is showing us that here comes this new yeast, right? What does it have to do with battling pride, though? We're going to get to that in a minute. But more than that, I would love to hear your solution. 866-348-7884. Well, have you ever considered, and this is what I told you I was going to do something for our prayer life here. Have you ever considered that when Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer that we are actually, when we get to the part where we're asking for our daily bread, we're asking for Jesus, right? Consider with me that Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, right? Beth meaning house of and Lehem meaning bread. And follow along in John 6, 32. Jesus said to them, very, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said, sir, always give us this bread. And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never go thirsty. So as I began to really ponder this, how cool is that? That when we're doing the Lord's Prayer, and I I guess I'm just dull that I never saw that before, (laughs) that inside the Lord's Prayer, I'm asking for Jesus, right? Because I'm saying, give me this day my daily bread. But if we go back to the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, and we're still working on our yeast understanding and the dopamine, eye on the prize, right? Look how Jesus sets up the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. There's the prize. Rather than thinking about Robbie's kingdom coming, what if we think about Jesus' coming? And if we really have faith and we believe we're praying that, see, we get the dopamine buzz of working on the God's kingdom. I'm sure that you've been on some mission trip or or maybe shared Christ with somebody or even had a chance to teach somewhere, and all of a sudden you felt like, man, I'm really on purpose here. Well, that's your dopamine, right? So like Ephesians 5.18 says, don't get drunk on wine, which leads to pottery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So consider that the Feast of Pentecost, that's where they waved the leavened bread. If you look at Leviticus 23, 16, I don't know if you knew this, but they used unleavened bread for Passover, but at Pentecost, they used leavened bread. So if you count off Leviticus 23, 16, count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two tenths of an F of the finest flour baked with yeast. Right there. In Leviticus 23, 16, it's baked with yeast as an offering of first fruits to the Lord. <laughs> so if we can get our eyes on the right prize, we get this leaven. We get this filling of the spirit. And when your eyes are on that prize, it's a different kind of thing. It's a new leaven, right? The Holy Spirit. Take a look at Matthew 13, 33, right? And this is Jesus again speaking. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all the way through the dough. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of flour. There's a lot of dough, a lot of yeast. So we come back more on battling with an antidote for pride. We'd love your story. 866-348-7884. Just because my aunt full of caps Just because the basement's full of cars Just because I ground the numbers off her engine block She thinks I She thinks I steal cars which, you know, it's kind of, have you ever had anybody that just judged you like that? That you're like, they, it's clear that they're puffed up with pride and they think they're better than me. And and it's just, it brings out something in you that isn't pretty. And you end up with the same prideful reaction and you're next thing you know, drunk with pride and puffed up. And so what's the antidote to that? How did you get through it? What do you do in order to overcome that feeling of 
I'm better than everybody else. 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. If you've been listening to the last segments and you're going, wow, Robbie, that's a whole lot. I would really like to see that all written down. It's at ChristianCarGuy.com. I wrote down everything that I'm sharing with you today, all the scripture references and all the things that God gave me this week on this concept of our daily bread essentially is where it gets to is that we're set up in the Lord's prayer to set our eyes on the right prize rather than being our kingdom, (laughs) which is where pride takes us. If we go to God's kingdom, that's just a whole different situation. And in order to get there, it's going to take some daily bread, which is Jesus. And so I just described some of the ways that we see Jesus in the scriptures as described as bread. So as we come back to our, you know, Lord's prayer, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come again, I and the prize thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Well, that's the unique new yeast that we were talking about, the new way that the Holy Spirit has come in our life. You see, the kingdom is God's kingdom where each individual, everybody that you see reflects a unique aspect of God's glory. If you can see that, if you can see that each individual, right, God made them in his image and they're a huge value to the kingdom. Right, I can get my prize, right, and get my dopamine working on that reward because I don't have to concern myself with competing. As I, I know that God gave me a unique way to reflect God, but also when I look at, at anybody else, the guy that just cut me off in traffic, this has a lot to do with road rage, believe me, and I struggle here. <laughs> the guy that just cut me off in traffic or the one that really drives me crazy is is when you know that it's going down to one lane and the, the one lane says that it's going to end a mile ahead and everybody gets in the other lane to try to beat the traffic. And then Marvin the merger comes in right in front of you after you've waited two hours in the other lane. Well, that guy, he reflects God in a very unique way. And if you were really to get to know him, begin to see God's glory, you would be shocked, right? The Time Warner lady who just took an hour of your time and is driving you crazy. (laughs) She reflects God. And if I can call that out in her, you see, the kingdom is coming. And I can only do that with my daily bread. It's the only chance I have to overcome pride. See, Jesus, the bread of life, is the way to the Father, who on Pentecost sent the Holy Spirit, right? Through the Holy Spirit, I can see the scriptures. I can see Jesus sacrifice for me that blood that cleanses me from all unrighteousness. Yes, even pride and allows me to have God as my father. The kingdom is coming as a son, right? And if I can see it as a son, as an adopted son, then I can realize that, hey, everybody else is also a son, like a prince and a king, right? God adopted all them too, if they'll, if they'll accept his son and what happened. And then we get a chance to see that glory that's in every single individual that comes into the kingdom. See, I've begun to understand a little bit more of this from my head, but what I would love to do is get it to my heart. So Lord, help us to get this understanding that all these people out there reflect your glory from our head to our heart. Help us to be able to take on Philippians, right? And, and see others and esteem them better than ourselves. As you can see, I would love to get more cleansing on my struggle with pride and help road rage in every aspect of our lives. And I would really, really, really love to hear your story on how you got rid of that bloated feeling. (laughs) 866-348-7884. What's your antidote for the heinous sin of pride or the religious spirit? Call us 866-348-7884. Now, as I mentioned, all this stuff that I just described, the whole thing I did for three segments there is all at ChristianCarGuy.com. It's all written out, all the scriptures, links to psychology today, and all the places where I found some of the stuff that I talked about. So if you're interested in that, please, by all means, um, go to ChristianCarGuy.com. But while you're there, you'll note that the car show calendar's there because... Very good news. Next week, we're going to be in Douglasville, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. There's a car show there at Sweetwater Baptist Church. And I'm very excited about seeing all the sweet cars out there next Saturday, which is April 
28th, I would imagine, since the day's the 21st. And we're going to be out there. We're going to be broadcasting live. And they, by the way, have an amazing way that they bring the gospel into their car show. And if you like doing car shows at your church, I could not recommend more highly that you experience this one in Douglasville, Georgia. They do such a wonderful job with it. So I'm very looking forward to being there. But I'm also, if you got your calendar way out there, June the 2nd, I'm going to be doing a, a car show here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina at Calvary West out in Davie County, my old home stomping ground. So I'm looking forward to that. But also today, I wanted to, of course, I'm still leaving all of these lines open. If you have any question concerning cars or something we talked about or your story about pride, please call us, 866-348-7884. But I also want to speak to the Jesus labor love today uh, quite a bit in that, you know, God gave this ministry to us, uh, which is car repair for single moms, widows, and families in crisis. And, and I think it's been about eight years now that we've been doing this. And, and, and it really is an opportunity to uh, look into <laughs> the idea of pride from all sorts of aspects. Because here are a lot of folks that are really hurting. And one of the things that I learned about pride when I think about this is I'll never forget when I was recovering from cancer, and getting crushed by the Jeep, my Sunday school class came out and they built a wheelchair ramp on the back of my house. And my pride welled up and I said, what are you doing? You know, I, I, I don't deserve this. How could you do this kind of thing for me? And speaking to that kind of pride, what my Sunday school teacher said, I've never forgotten. He said, Robbie, which his name is Mike Cam. He said, Robbie, you know, we would do this for so many other people, but they don't let us. And when they don't let us do it, they rob us of the joy of helping them. And so I think about that every time I get a request on the Jesus labor love that this person has overcome their own pride to say, hey, I can't do this on my own. And they're asking for help. I think about that every time I get an email where somebody sends me a question that says, Robbie, I don't know. And, and <laughs> by the way, many times I don't have the answer, but I always try to find one. You know, they have a car question or they want to sell a car. Or they want to do something like that. So along those lines, if you're thinking I need to call right now and maybe lose a little bit of my pride and advance the kingdom, call us 866-348-7884. But as all these single moms and widows call in, there's other situations, and I wanted to make you aware of them. I'm so blessed out of my socks, and I get to see it, and I wish everybody did. But really, almost 10 months ago, um, there was a lady in Richmond, Virginia, and she had a car issue. And I have some good folks there in Richmond that help me quite often. Um, it's Titan Auto Care. It's, it's Butch up there. And I had her take the car over there, and when Butch looked at it, he told me the car was beyond repair it would take way more to repair this car than the value of the car. And so I told her that I didn't know what else to do, but just begin to pray that God would provide another car for her. And that quite often people donate cars, which is just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful when people donate cars to us, which by the way, you can do at christiancarguy.com. I realized this is like October. And I began to pray that God would provide her a car. And I sent it out to the team that prays for the Jesus labor love and they began to pray that God would send her a car and this lady is so sweet she would text me about maybe every two or three weeks I don't want to bug you but have you heard anything <laughs> I don't want to you know and she's just obviously crying out to God and meet this need for me meet this need for me well long about right after Christmas I got an email from a man who's I think his mother had passed away. And, and she had a car that was a 98 Toyota that she pretty much only took to church on Sunday. I think it only had like 50 or 60,000 miles on it. And the paint was gone, as the, you know, the interior kind of, but it ran really good, but we needed to do some stuff to it. So we'll finish up on this story about the donated car. More on the Jesus labor love, but we got plenty of time for you to get your pride story in. 866-348-7884. For this you'll need 500 grams of strong white flour, tea, 
teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of yeast, 350 ml of warm water, just tip it in, mix it all about. Our daily bread. We've been talking about that as an antidote for pride today on the Christian Car Guy radio show. Thank you so much for listening in today. And along those lines, I just don't have any idea how I could possibly battle the sin in my life without daily bread, right? Daily time with Jesus and his word, daily time in prayer, asking him to look into my life and find these things that I know are hurting other people and opportunities to join with him in building the kingdom. Uh, it makes such a difference in all the different things, whether it's dealing with road rage, dealing with a Jesus labor love mom that is struggling. And sometimes, you know, they're hurting and they, and they will hurt us. So we would love to hear your solution. 866-348-7884. 866-34-TRUTH is the number to call in and share uh, anything you've got, a, a need or a story, we would love to hear it. Uh, we were talking about the Jesus labor love and the lady that had asked and asked really for a long time about, you know, getting a car donated. And so the wonderful family donated this car that I believe was his mother's that, you know, it was an 87 and it had some stuff we needed to do to, in order to get it ready. And, and a you know, we have all these wonderful volunteers, but they're doing work for us while, you know, they're still having to pay the bills. So unfortunately it took actually from about January, February, and March to get this car fixed. And yet this wonderful mom would text me every two or three weeks. Am I still on the list? Do you think you might have a car for me? Every time really sweet messages, but here they would come and I would just be waiting God, please, God, please (laughs) help us get this car. Well, this week, the car got done. And actually, she had to drive to Raleigh to get, she she went from Richmond to Raleigh to get the title, and she came to Winston-Salem to pick up the car where we had it fixed, drove back to Richmond. That night, after all that day just getting this car, I got this wonderful text from her, and it said, Robbie, I can't thank you enough. This week, I'll be able to go to church without asking for a ride. Wow. Those of you who donate to the Jesus Labor Love, whether it's a car or financial, we probably helped with and prayed with 10 or 12 single moms and widows and families in crisis, people with Down syndrome, children, and things, the stories I could tell you I could spend the rest of this time talking about. How God has worked in all these people's lives, but the way he does that is through your prayers and through your support of the Jesus Labor Love. In all the different ways, again, you go to christiancarguy.com, just telling somebody about it. And then, um, I, you know, that happens time and again, where somebody heard it on the radio, told somebody a need, somebody came and they got help and they felt Jesus come into a life, into their life at a point in need. And, and he changes everything, just like our daily bread. Well, we have Ken as in Colfax. Ken, you're on the Christian Car Guy Show. Good morning. Good morning. I actually called to tell you you went off the air, but you just came back on. Uh, I was talking to your screener, and he asked me to want to talk to you. And I said, well, I always want to talk to Robbie. <laughs> but, you know, you know, go one step further where you was talking about the Pentateuch and the 12 tribes, and then you said the four Gospels and the, the seven, the number seven. Right. Also, you know, you have to take in consideration when you consider the 12 tribes after the Pentateuch, consider the seven known churches oh, that wow. were scattered abroad. Absolutely. Hey, which leads, yeah. <laughs> which, <laughs> That's which why I love people Which leads me call- to the Apostle Paul. You know, we admire him so much. And he was definitely a genius with the law and the grace of God. But, you know, he... I wonder if God thought he was going to have a pride, prideful or a, a struggle with pride because of his knowledge. Because, you know, he was given a thorn in the flesh to uh, be to keep 
keep him from being exalted above measure. Now, that sounds like a prideful yeah. expression to me. And he accepted it, you know. And I think in our own personal lives as Christians, uh, sometimes God has to give us that thorn just to keep us humble. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I agree. like yeah. the yeast that you was so uh, uh, talking about, you know, I feel pride rising up in me many times. And the Word of God is like the yeast. It'll rise, it'll rise up in you and tell you that you're wrong. And, of course, you know, we're dependent on the Word, just like just yeah. like Paul tells us. And um, Wow, Ken, that, like you this, know, I... This I, morning, I didn't want to call in. I just, like I said, I just called to tell you he's off the air, but... I didn't want to call in because I thought if I called in, then it wouldn't be right to call in on the next show to try to win a prize. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always right for you to call but in, Ken. Also, and you also, blessed me with the seven churches. I had not thought about that. That is well, awesome. That is absolutely well, wonderful. I've just been praying, God, show me what, you know, because it was Jesus was pretty clear. You you need to understand this. Yeah, yeah. He, his, his words were very uh, weighty and valuable, and there was always more than just the evident meaning and application. I, wanna... I think that's why the disciples stayed so confused till after the resurrection. And I stay so confused. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, well, God how, bless how cool is it going to be, week. Ken? How cool is it going to be? When we when we get to see all this stuff start to oh 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 yeah wow it's yeah. just so amazing his word yeah. comes in 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 so many different ways thank you for oh man it made my day you calling oh. in today of the, the well, seven it churches made my day many Saturdays <laughs> except last week when you weren't there oh sorry was, <laughs> come to the boot camp okay. next time God bless you I thanks know, Ken. I know. all right okay bye bye all right what's your story we would love to hear at eight six six Three four eight seven eight eight four is the number to call in and share. Maybe you have an antidote for sin. I love um, what Ken just shared there, and 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 it's so much to do with getting in there and spending time with God through His Word, but also in prayer as you're in His Word to show Him stuff like that. And if you get really thirsty, it's amazing to me. It really is amazing to me. Like you just get the question, you go, I do not understand this, God. Show me the answer. Show me the answer. I do not understand that. And then he, he gets Ken to call in and give you another aspect of it. I mean, it, that's that's the way it works is once you, you go to him with questions like that, that he's going to just bless you with all sorts of answers. But also when you have physical needs, and, and when we can swallow our pride and say, hey, I need help. I can't handle this. Um, and, and then there's other people that really you rob them of the blessing of helping you if you don't tell them, right? How many people, how many, you know, people get up there and they get puffed up and think that they're beyond help, but we all need it desperately. <laughs> we need it every day, our daily bread. Uh, that's the beauty of manna. It's the beauty of the story that, you know, every day you come in and you need a little bit more. So it's certainly my prayer that, that, that you enjoyed today's Christian Car Guy show. As I pointed out before, if you go to ChristianCarGuy.com, you can find out more about the Jesus Labor Love, Car Repair Labor, Single Moms, Widows, and Families in Crisis. And next week, again, we're going to be in Douglasville, Georgia for that car show. So for the first time in many, many, many months, we won't have a Christian Car Guy Theater episode, but we will have one the following week, the first week of May. We'll probably get two in there in May. So don't worry. Brad and the gang, Bad Brad, will find some truth, believe me, in the next episode of Christian Car Guy Theater. Well, thanks again for listening today. Remember, slow down. Jesus walked everywhere he went and got it all done in 33 years. While you're slowing down, eat some bread. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Christian Car Guy Show. God bless.